What's up guys, Kevin here, back with another video. Um, this video has been a long time coming. Uh, this is my pickups over the past year, essentially. Um, I'm going to try and not have uh, repeats. Uh, I have done a few videos on my channel talking about products that were uh, like pickups, but this is gonna be stuff that uh, either I haven't done pickups on or haven't done videos on, I mean, uh, or just other like miscellaneous stuff that I feel like wouldn't necessitate a video. Um, so yeah, my last pickups video was last year. This is for this year, um, fall winter type of groove. Uh, and then I guess, I guess we'll get started. Um, also, if you haven't been to my channel, hi, I'm Kevin. I run a fashion YouTube channel. I've been doing it for a few years. Um, this is just essentially a place for me to talk about clothing, style, um, buyer and seller tips on Grail, which I do have an update coming soon because a lot of things have changed after the GOAT acquisition, but we'll talk about that one later. Um, and yeah, like let me know what other content you guys would like to see because I did post on my Instagram what sort of videos would you guys like to see. Um, and then I believe this pickups video was first and then second was maybe like a fall winter uh, like clothing uh, like video. So, so Let's get started with one of the most important pieces for, or I guess parts of your wardrobe, especially for fall winter, which is the outerwear category. Uh, starting off first is the J68 PLMX. This is uh, the acronym's Rider Jacket. Um, that is more of that like insulated uh, like material using, I believe, Primaloft. Uh, this is water resistant, but it's mainly used as um, an insulating unit. It keeps you warm. Uh, I got this in a size medium. Um, and then I decided to go with the MX because one, it's a very unique uh, color where it has the alpha green as well as the RAF as well as the black paneled throughout. And I just thought overall it looked very, very clean, very, very unique. Um, and I really like it when uh, the acronym does these sort of weird one-off like MX uh, versions because they've also done it um, on the J1 as well as a few other jackets that have that like MX uh, like in it. Um, I have been looking for the J68 for a really long time. I just didn't know which version to get. They just released both a vest version as well as um, a Gore-Tex version as well as I think they also have a Windstopper version and then they have the they have like multiple different PL versions. Um, and yeah, uh, like one of the main things with the PL J68 is that the tag wears off. So like after maybe even a few, like a, a few washes even, the tag falls off. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. But I really, really like this jacket. I've been looking for a good writer jacket for a long time. Uh, and then this is, I guess, the one that I landed on. It fits pretty snug, which is how the writer jackets should fit. Um, and then it does run a little bit short, which is again, like aesthetically, I think that's how it's supposed to look. Um, I do really like the asymmetrical pockets. Uh, I believe that Corbin has done a pretty good video on his J68 PL. Same version, except this is just the MX and I believe his was the RAF. Like check that out, I'll leave a link in the description down below. Next up, I talked about this during my monthly coffee break, which is like a video podcast sort of thing that covers a month's worth of cool releases, upcoming releases, leaks, etc. But this is a leather busson uh, by a company called uh, like Modal Day, which is a Korean brand. Uh, the leather busan I think is in collaboration with, I believe it's a, a DJ slash like record studio called Appendix, but I think Appendix is also a brand. But yeah, this is a leather busan jacket. They released two versions. The version that I have is the one with the stripes. So you can kind of see that it's almost like an asymmetrical stripe detail where on the right hand, stripes start off higher in the articulation as well as on the left it starts a bit lower and goes down i really really like this jacket it's it's pretty soft because it, it uses calfskin leather um, but surprisingly it's not super super padded so i can still wear it really easily as like a layering piece 
Um, I got a size 3 which would translate into a large but this does fit more snug so this fits like a US medium in my opinion. Um, I believe they went up to a size 4 which would be an XL but it'll probably fit like a medium. Um, but yeah, uh, like wonderful, wonderful uh, like, like leather bousson, nice like leather detailing all throughout. Um, like one of the cool things I think is that it has a double zip. And I believe it's a YKK, yeah, it's a YKK double zip. Very, very sturdy, very heavy duty. Um, probably one of my favorite pickups of this entire year, just in general. Just very, very tough. Next up is a new brand. I picked up a few things by them. It's uh, like Seventh Studios. I mentioned them a few months ago. It is a brand based out of the UK where they have very clean colors, very clean silhouettes, and gives off that like retro vibe, but the colors that they pick feel very modern and very, um, I don't know, it's not like super, super generic, but it's also like, oh shit, like those colors just fit like super, super well. Like the Pantones and the shades that they pick are A1. This is uh, their vest. Um, it's a very, very clean vest. As you guys can see, very, very minimal lines. It has two side pockets right here. Um, it has a decent amount of padding where it'll keep you warm and Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a very simple simple jacket. The cut of it is like super super nice um, How I've been wearing it a lot is that I've been wearing it over a hoodie So it's sort of like a on top layering piece um, I'm sure I could use this as an insulating piece for whenever I wear like a droop like a Gore-Tex like jacket or anything like that I'm sure that'll also work, but I think it aesthetically looks really, really nice with like a hoodie or a zip up hoodie like underneath. I think that is A1. Uh, here is one pickup that I didn't really expect to get. Um, it just, like I haven't purchased anything from Supreme for so many seasons. And then this past season or two, um, I feel like a lot of items, uh, partially because one, they're more accessible. so. It's not like I have to fight against 10,000 bots to get it. And then two, I think a lot of the low key pieces are really, really nice. This is one of the low key pieces. This was a part of the Undercover Supreme collaboration, this most recent one. Uh, it's a two in one where it is a coat with a unzippable uh, like puffer jacket underneath. I think this is super, super cool just because the price was pretty fair. It was really, really fairly priced. Um, this was from their summer 2023 and a lot of the times I rarely wear them both together. I wear one or the other. So some days I just want the coat, I get the coat. Some days I just want the puffer, I grab the puffer. And the coat itself is of like a herringbone pattern. I'll show you guys some close-up shots in a second, but here is the puffer jacket. It's fairly simple, puffer, supreme, undercover, and then this is builder. It's Fairly light, lightweight puffer, but it does keep me warm. Um, I believe the, let me double check because I think this is also Primaloft. Yeah, it's a it, it's a Primaloft fill with uh, like Pertex Quantum. I don't exactly know what Pertex Quantum is, but I know like Primaloft is the padding and the insulating material, but I'm a big fan of the versatility of this item. Um, I'm. Very, very happy that I picked it up just because I essentially got a two-in-one. I got a puffer jacket plus a herringbone coat. So it's a success in my book. I know that they did a herringbone coat before, uh, one in burgundy and one in black. Um, and then this past season, the season that, that this was a part of, I really liked the BDU pants and the jacket, but I wasn't a big fan of the studded, jeweled sort of material. Uh, so I ended up just passing on that one and then I'm hoping to maybe eventually find it secondhand for cheaper just because I remember it being one of the more expensive items on the collection. Next up is going to be a jacket that I picked up just because I love the aesthetic of it and then this is my first pickup uh, from Goldwyn. This is the Goldwyn collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. This is a three layer Gore-Tex jacket. So this is a collaboration with Actual Source Books, which is a bookstore slash design company, I believe, in Japan. Uh, the Goldwyn is a Japanese company. They have a flagship store here in San Francisco, as well as 
in Japan as well. Um, Goldwyn, I think, has very, very unique collaborations as well as very unique products where a lot of their mainline stuff is really, really fairly priced. And then they occasionally do these higher tier, um, like collaborative efforts, like, you know, like Goldwyn Zero. And then they also do collaborations with uh, like actual source books like this. They released the full collection. I believe there was a three layer Gore-Tex jacket like this one, as well as they had a black. I really, really love this industrial blue. I think this is one of the most sick jackets, as well as if you look at some of the adverts that they released for it, it just looks so crazy. Um, big fan of this jacket. This is probably, like this has been essentially my Cortex shell since I got it. Um, I really haven't found the need to get a Cortex shell outside of when I got my first, Arteryx um, like system a jacket like way back when the dune jacket I think that was a while ago but this is my second shell and it just works perfectly this works very very seamlessly it has a bit more of an oversized fit but because of the fact that the toggles you can pull it in to adjust the fit of it it can scrunch up to where it gives it like a cropped sort of body and I think that is peak Peak, absolutely. Uh, now that we're done with the outerwear, um, I guess we'll go to tops. Uh, first up, it's a kind of a, an interesting pickup. So I ended up getting two hoodies from the unreleased uh, La Easy Gap mainline drop. Uh, this was supposed to drop fall winter of last year. And then because of everything happened with Ye, uh, he, not he, Gap decided to repurpose it and sell it in other countries for cheap etc. So um, a lot of the items that were produced are kind of making their ways out, um, like whether they were bulk sold in China or they were bulk sold uh, to a bunch of salespeople for like liquidation, etc. Pretty much Gap had liquidated everything. Um, a lot of stuff were going for crazy cheap in China, if I remember correctly, like you could get a mystery dove hoodie for like $80, if I remember correctly. And that includes like a mainline Yeezy Gap like item, just like randomly. I think it was somewhere in like in like a like a Chinese version of like eBay or Amazon that that was being sold, which was crazy. So um, the prices initially were pretty crazy. So I picked up a size medium in the light gray um, quite a few months ago, and I've been wearing it a lot. Um, I picked this up for 150, and. I, I really, really like the fit of the medium. And then I also decided to grab it in a large just recently, just because the prices have shot down dramatically. I think I got this for like 70 and it's the same exact hoodie. It's a double layered hoodie, except not as thick as the Easy Gap, the perfect hoodie. It's slightly thinner, but I almost feel like that makes for a better zip up hoodie, just because the thicker the hoodie, the harder it is to wear. Uh, especially if it's in a pullover uh, type of shape, but I think the large fits really nicely as a, like a more oversized, but all, both the medium and the large are slightly cropped on the body. Um, I just also really like this light gray. It's almost like a tan gray, if you guys can make it out. Um, it's actually kind of interesting because it, it really does, it's like tonally kind of similar, except the Seven Studio is a bit colder while this one is a bit warmer in terms of uh, tone but both those jackets are really good. I got them from a vintage seller in Canada called F as in Frank. If I remember correctly, he had a promotion running where a bunch of like, like Yeezy garments were on sale and they're really, really cheap. Um, like I think, so again, another pickup I'm gonna be talking about is the long sleeve as well as the tank top um, that was also part of the Yeezy Gap collection. This is the long sleeve where it's sort of like a mock neck long sleeve. They had a short sleeve mock neck and then they also had uh, some tank tops as well. Um, I bought the mock necks as well as the tank tops. The tank tops, funny enough, I actually use them so frequently that they're all in the wash and you know, I'll just put a picture up. But I got, I believe this is the dark navy. I'm wearing the poetic gray. Uh, if you guys can kind of see, it's sort of like a wash that they did where they had a gray 
shirt and then they treated it with an extreme washing enzyme and then it made this interesting really 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 faded gray um, and it's cool because on the inside you can see that it was originally like a really really dark gray so uh, I think that's cool because they have a gray poetic gray uh, black and then poetic black I believe they also might have a navy but I'm not 100% sure um, but you guys can get all of that at uh, like F as in Frank but there's a bunch of different Sellers, you can also find some on Grail for pretty cheap as well. Some people bought a bunch and then they're just trying to let it go. Uh, like next up is another Supreme pickup. This is a Supreme work jacket with the American Psycho print on the back. I really, really liked the American Psycho motif that they used this year. And I, I genuinely thought it was like one of the best items of the entire season. The American Psycho, this is the original book cover. Uh, like of it, I thought it just looked very, very punk slash. Um, it gives it that like dark tone. And um, this work jacket, it's not super, super heavy. I do wish it was kind of more of like a moleskin, uh, but it feels like relatively lightweight, which again, per use case, it can be acceptable to you. Um, yeah, I'm very, very, very happy with this pickup, especially in the brown color. I think it looks really, really nice. I know that they released um, a t-shirt of it, but I was much more interested in the work shirt. Next up is another pickup from uh, like Seven Studios. This is their M, I think M8 Cuban shirt. So their M8 Cuban shirt is essentially like a magnetic button shirt. So it's a very cool idea where it's almost like that Cuban shirt aesthetic and it's slightly cropped on the body, it has two pockets on the side as well but fully magnetic enclosure, bam. Like it, it, it closes up perfectly. I like this shape, I like the color. Sometimes the magnets can get a little bit annoying just because sometimes I want the shirt to be open and then randomly like a magnet will just attach itself. Um, I just think the idea is cool. The execution could have been a little bit better just because maybe I would have liked this shirt without any magnets in general just because just have it be like an open sort of shirt because i think the look of it as just an open shirt is equally as like pretty sick uh the inner lining is with a perforated mesh and i think that just kind of leads it to being a bit more of like a summer sort of lightweight uh shirt but i definitely do layer this with like a t-shirt underneath um i haven't tried to layer it with like any sort of hoodie but I'm sure it could be usable for that as well. Oh, here are a few tees that I picked up. These three are from Supreme. Supreme like undercover tee, the Archangel tee, I think. Supreme undercover tee. Really like it, super, super simple. I thought the graphic was really, really cool. I do think it is a little bit large for my taste, but I think the graphic was just too cool to pass up. Steven Box logo, really, really sick. I forgot if I showed this off last year, but I'm a big fan of it. Super clean. Last one is the Lupin T from the Undercover Supreme, this most recent one. I thought it was just a really, really cool print. And then, yeah, like pretty much, it gives off that like huge vintage like t-shirt vibe with like the huge print. I know I just said that the Supreme um, like undercover shirt had a big, print and it was bigger than my preference but I think that one it's just like a it's like a rectangle so it's a little bit of an eyesore while this one it's a little bit more evenly distributed sorry about that I had to do a short intermission because I realized that I forgot some pieces um, one of them being purple mountain observatories ombre windbreaker I talked about this in my October um, coffee break where it's a company that I recently found based in the UK as well where they have some very very unique as well as reasonably priced outdoor sort of corp-esque gear and their latest collection knocked it out of park this was my favorite item from them this is essentially like an ombre windbreaker with a mesh lining has some taped seams as well it's just a very lightweight jacket I really do like that they have this sort of ventilation so as well as it is sort of removable in that way where you could undo it to make it definitely more and more breathable. But I like that dual functionality of it. 
as well. Super, super clean jacket, super sick. There's a lot of customizability in terms of fit because they have toggles for the hood, they have toggles for the bottom as well. So what really, really well uh, put together. I love the colors and how they work together because the top isn't like a, like a super, super black. It's almost like a dark, dark, dark burgundy in a way. So really, really sick. Another item that I forgot to bring out is the Safe House Miles Ahead Vintage Tee. This is a vintage tee from Safe House. Let me double check because I remember flipping it inside out when I first got it. The, the fabric is just extremely soft, super, super fire. New cigar company, Truck Stop in Tampa, Florida. Trucker by choice, American by birth. So, um, sick, but if you don't mind, I'll just be wearing it on the miles ahead side, I will say, but super, super soft. I think he has really, really great prices um, and super, super down to earth. I remember when I got my hat by them that it arrived in America, but then for some reason it said that it couldn't find the address, so it shipped it back. He was able to ship out the hat as well as this tee when I placed the order in together even before he gets the hat returned back to him. So very, very gracious of him. Um, and yeah, and yeah, speaking of the hat, I guess we can dive into uh, accessories. So I don't have a lot, but this is the Safe House New York script hat. As you can kind of see, very, very sick, sort of low profile, unstructured, safe house print or not print uh embroidery in the back with this brass hardware uh the only thing is that i maybe sometime in the future maybe i'll replace this strap with a leather strap as well um another thing i never thought i would pick up again is a supreme camp cap um this is the first time that supreme has redone this um this box logo since i believe their la or is it their fairfax it's, it's like one of their store openings, they had this box logo and this is the very first time that they redid it. And I, I just got the olive just because I thought it worked extremely well, um, kind of gives it that almost mil spec vibe. It's just of a brushed cotton, very, very solid. Um, I believe their camps are still made in Canada, which is nice. I know a lot of the other hats have sort of moved on to China, um, but it's interesting to see that after all these years, the camp cat still stay the same. And then last for the accessories is the acronym 3ATS. 3ATS. TS stands for the Texas system that they have, which is essentially their uh, customizability modular system. Uh, the one that I got is the uh, reversed black where the X-Pack fabric that they use is actually reversed. So on the inside, you'll see how it sort of is that matte. Uh, for this one, they took a unique approach and then they had it inside out, still same properties, but then the distressing definitely shows a lot more and the wear and tear shows a lot more on the reverse side. Uh, if I had a choice, I probably wouldn't have gotten the reverse, but I was able to grab this for such a steal that I thought, you know, like, why not? Like, let me make it work. And again, I still do like it. I remember getting it way back when I was first getting into acronym, but the version that I had, the strap system was weird. And then it just wasn't the backpack that I kind of needed because I needed a traditional backpack that could hold like laptop, etc. Um, like rather than this lightweight, almost like city messenger bag. Um, now that, I mean, I have a backpack that carries laptops, those like heavy duty type of stuff, um, this backpack is, or this bag is essentially just gonna be whatever I take on the go sort of type of stuff where I don't absolutely need full, full, full capacity like I would with a backpack. But yeah, it's pretty sick. Very, very big 3M zippers and the classic acronym third arm. Oh man. Oh my God. Super happy to add this. Um, I'm hoping to add some mods to the front to make it feel more like a 3A1, um, but 
we shall see how that goes. I'm gonna probably be stress testing this when I visit Korea later this month, so keep out for a review. You guys may see a review of this guy coming soon while even when I'm at Korea. Man, I just can't get enough of that. I can't get enough of And two pairs of pants, nothing too crazy. Um, I was able to get a pair of APC um, jeans, the petite standards. Uh, for under 80 or 90 bucks on sale. Super, super sick. Uh, I just needed a black pair of pants. I need to get this um, hemmed a little bit, but other than that, super, super fire. Another one is by Observer. This is their 13 ounce Cone Mills denim uh, in black. This is by, or this brand, I guess in general, is by a a photographer um, he's been featured on many magazines I decided to give it a try just because it has an interesting self hemming system uh, as well as it has like an already installed belt so you can self belt it you don't need an additional belt with this and it's a very heavy-duty sort of 13 ounce slightly waxed denim um, pretty excited to give it some more wear and tear I've only worn it a handful of times but I'm hoping that this upcoming season I can get a lot more wear into it. Next up is going to probably be what a lot of people are interested in, my footwear pickups. Um, although the, the fashion and the clothing space has um, moved on from sneakers for the general part, and everyone's picking up like Ricks or, you know, like Margiela's or Guidi's and stuff like that, I honestly, I... I just can't fully hop on, you know what I'm saying? Like I am always a sneaker type of guy and I don't know necessarily that speaks to my maturity, um, but I have always been tried and true sneaker type of guy. I, I love sneakers, I love the design of them, I love the comfort, I love the aestheticism of them and I also love the, the like democratization where like, fuck it, like, you know, now like everybody can enjoy sneakers. so. I think that's one of the positive sides where it's like a universal, like no matter where you come from, if you fuck with sneakers, you fuck with sneakers type of deal. So without all of that philosophical bullshit, let's get on to the first pickup, which is a very recent one. This is the Yuto Horigome Nike SB Dunk Low Pro. So this is a very recent pickup of mine. I think this is the best SB of the year, hands down. Um, I think this is better than the Haritos uh, Dunk Low. I really, really like the colors of it. I love the the wearability of it. I just love pretty much like almost like anything. The details are really sick. Uh, the only downside for me is fit and materials. So the fit being that they redid the SB shape this year just because um, previously like an eight and a half would fit me fine. Um, and then like sometimes I would size up to a nine and then that would even fit me better But I can make an eight and a half work So I got this in an eight and a half and damn this bitch is like narrow like super super narrow um, I can still make it work, but I am essentially just trying to stretch this out until it becomes a lot more comfortable um, And then two materials a bunch of people were gushing over the materials for this. No, this is like pretty average um, Nike materials the only parts that are like, okay, are like the new bug the new bugs fine the the middle like leather swoosh it's fine the suede here it's fine like everything but like this white leather although you like see creases like this is this is already starting to crease a bit a bit ugly as you can see um it's definitely not a nice white leather like man like if i held the casinos up to this like this is like this is garbaggio but again um, I think this is the best uh, the SB of the year and I'm glad that SB prices have been dropping and just sneaker prices in general have been dropping just because um, I don't think this would be worth anything near over what I paid. I paid about like 280 and I still think that this is a fair price but the fit go up almost half to a full size like on this bitch like shit like I wore an 8 in normal dunks and 8.5 is narrow so I would need a 9 for this. So another SB that I went the correct size on is the Ramalzi uh, Dunk High. I love the Dunk High versus the Dunk Low. I think the Dunk High, uh, like the colorway in general. Ooh. 
Look at how beautiful that shit looks. The colorway in general just looks super, super fire. I think it looks so much better than the lows. Um, the prices of the highs are much lower, like $100 lower than the lows. I think this is your best bang for your buck. And again, I want a size nine and I'm a size eight, and these fit great. Um, it has all that classic dunk high SB. It's not a pro model, so it doesn't have that, um, that extra foam insert like the Yutos do or some of the other dunks do. Um, but yeah, great, great shoe. Suede on this, again, decent. The canvas is just printed canvas, um, so that's that, but I really like it. It gives me Paris SB vibes. Um, like, not that you should buy this just because it looks like the Paris. I think you should buy this because it is a sick shoe, just in general. So, one of the, I think this one is probably on my number two for SBs of this year. Number one, the Yuto. Number two, these guys. So, super sick. Next up is an oldie. So, if you guys have been subscribed to me back in the day, I did a review of the Soul Land Dunk Low and Dunk Highs. This was way before the initial wave of the Dunk Hype resurgence. Um, and then I always liked these shoes. I sold them off because someone gave me a ridiculous offer, but I was able to reacquire them for a fair price. Here is the Soul Land Dunk High. It is quite worn, I will say, but I can clean these up, definitely. Or I could just keep them worn like this. A bit scuffed up. Sole is a bit yellowing as well, but great, great, comfortable shoe like this. This is a wonderful pair of dunks. And also it's a decon dunk. So a lot of people, what they don't like about uh, dunk highs is that it's just so puffy up top. Get yourself a pair of decon dunk highs. That gives it almost like a blazer upper thinness, but also the bottom sole like feeling of like a Jordan one or like a Nike SB dunk. Like it's, it's fire. Like it, I, I wish Nike would make more decon uh, like dunk highs. Cause I think those would those would fit a lot of people's wardrobes and sort of silhouette choices. Next up, that is, oh, I guess I'll do my last Nike sort of pickup. This was a few months ago. This was when they first did uh, the reimagines. So, the reimagined Jordan 3s. These guys are wonderful. Um, I love the Jordan 3 white cement. One of my favorite shoes of all time. Um, I still think the black cements are better. I have yet to wear these. These are crispy DS. I just changed out the laces for nicer, thicker um, cotton laces, but I still have yet to find the occasion of wearing these just because these are, man, like if I, if Jordan brand does a black cement in this same style, like man, I gotta double up. I love the white cement, but the black cement is primo. Um, the leather quality is much better than the previous white cements, which I guess isn't a super high bar to clear, but it definitely is nicer. It's one of the more uh, premium feeling uh, Jordan 3s of the past time, especially the OG colorway. So super, super sick shoe. I have yet to wear it. It is still on ice. Super, super sick. I'm glad that they actually decided to retro it. So uh, moving on to, I guess my only New Balance pickup which if you guys tune into Coffee Break, you guys would have seen the Action Bronson 990 uh, V6. So the 990 V6 Lapis Azuli. Um, this is a beautiful running uh, lifestyle focused shoe, quite light. I really do like all the different pops of color on this with the hiking laces. I know that um, Action Bronson said, don't fuck with my shit by changing out the laces. And to be honest, I can't imagine a different lace option in here. E like even a cream colored lace would feel wrong. Um, definitely one of my favorite, if not my favorite New Balance uh, drop of this year. Um, it's just such a comfortable shoe. I took this to Greece um, and it worked perfectly well there. Um, I'm planning on taking it to Korea. This is definitely like my go-to like travel shoe. My only thing is, is that I would definitely recommend sizing up a half size um, or at least going true to size. So I'm a size eight. I got these in a seven and a half and it took some breaking in. This fits fine, but if you want straight out the gate, 
comfort true to size or even half size up just because um, I heard that the more recent 990 V6s have been starting to feel a bit narrow. So we'll see how that goes. But this one, I did have to stretch it out a little bit, um, but it works perfectly fine now. Next up is my Adidas shoes, which this one is kind of a low key one. Not a lot of people know about it, but it is my foot industry superstar. So foot industry is a, I believe Chinese footwear company. Um, where they do a lot of cool uh, takes on traditional footwear, like they did a German army trainer. Like recently they did a German army trainer with a knitted sock liner attached to it. I thought that's really cool. But their Adidas collection was really, really sick. I believe it was three shoes, the Superstar, the Rivalry High, and it was one other shoe. I'll put the images here. Um, but all of them look super primo. The materials are crazy on this. Like I'm not a huge superstar fan, but this is like my favorite superstar, just flat out in general, even compared to like, like pretty much like anything. Like the only thing that might come close are the ones coming out with clot. But even then, I think these might take the cake. This is a, a decon superstar where there's like no padding where you could hypothetically use it as like a slip on. Um, but I don't do that. I just kind of lace it up. I would recommend sizing down like a full size. Uh, so if you guys are able to pick this up, because I only think they release probably, it can't be more than 150 pairs per uh, model, like 200 pairs per model, because this sold out like that, like instantly. Um, like this was a super, super low key release. Um, yeah, but I'm a size eight. And I got this in a US 7, and then it fits like perfectly, especially because of the decom nature of it. Um, I would also recommend for the other two pairs, I heard go true to size for those, but if you want the Superstar, size down like a full size. Really, for real. Like, like you'll, yeah, like you'll be happy. My last Adidas uh, pickup is an interesting one, and I think Packer Shoes has been doing a great job with Adidas this past year. This is the Intimidation Mid. Uh, the Intimidation Mid, it has that crazy, crazy um, eight sole. A lot of people will know this sole from the Yeezy 500s, um, but this sole was used on a bunch of Adidas models prior to uh, like Ye grabbing it from the archives. But this is such a sick sort of shoe where it is that basketball sort of model, but with a touch of lifestyle. There's like this suede panel up here. It has the laces going down it does give me like i almost feel like the yeezy 700 v3s got this sort of idea that exoskeleton sort of shape from the intimidation because uh, just because like it definitely does give it that like yeezy vibe with the 500 so like and that's why i can understand why people are going to say like oh like you know adidas can't do anything without like yay's influence like no they have a huge archive they just need to figure out the right people to go back into the archive. So yeah, very, very sick shoe, go true to size. Um, I love the model of it. I love the ankle panel that they have, like an additional ankle stabilizer. Um, it's, it, it's a very, very clean, clean looking shoe. And I don't believe it's going for too much on the aftermarket as well. They did have another colorway that was like dark navy and burgundy, if I remember correctly. I think this is the more wearable of the two, but I think the other one had a smaller amount of stock so next up is kind of interesting so i have quite a few vans pickups um i think vans right now uh they're going through a period of reevaluation and rediscovery where a lot of uh that interest and creativity in vans has sort of left and dissipated i think that's the hard part with running such a big brand is you still have to balance um, both going that mainstream route, but at the same time still uh, involving and looping in those tastemakers and those people who are really creative in that space. Um, I think Vans is definitely doing a good idea and good job with low key people like I'll just mention. Um, I got three pairs from the Benjamin Edgar collaboration I have, this is the Authentic. He essentially did a decon Authentic with his own take on the 
heel counter where it's like an external heel, heel counter. And man, I love this. It's such a clean, clean shoe. Like man, object on one side, Vans on the other. It has a comfy cush insole. Very clean white pair of Vans with that cream sole. And then I have two pairs of the half cab decons. This one's in collaboration with Ron Lewis, who is a Chicago based artist. He runs his own brand. And this Icy Mint is one of his uh, like signature sort of colors. And this one is just the industrial orange color of the half cab. They're both decon, so very, very minimal padding. But man, don't these guys look crazy? Like, man, very, very minimal uh, paneling as well as I think it's really cool that they were able to incorporate that vulcanized sole even into the lace hoops. Um, this must have taken so long because it's a completely new skew as well. It's, it's just such a sick silhouette. Um, I believe he still has a few in stock in his store. I'll leave a link down in the description below. Um, they fit true to size. Uh, they do have a comfy cushion sole, very, very comfortable. Um, probably one of my most worn pairs of this past year, especially the orange one. Love the orange one. And the one that I did a review on, I know I said I wouldn't re-mention it, but I just wanted to point it out. Advisory Board Crystals did a collaboration with Vans I believe this is the EVDNT EXT Ultimates. Um, really, really like this shoe. I do wear this actually quite often. This is probably one of my most worn uh, pairs of shoes right next to the Benjamin Eggers. I feel like I've been wearing this more than the Benjamin Eggers as of recent, but earlier this year, I was running through the Benjamin Edgar uh, the half calves like crazy, but super, super comfortable shoe. Very, very unique. Like I think that what draws me to these is just the fact that how unique they are and honestly how comfortable they are. They are very, very comfortable pair of shoes. Um, not as squishy, but they have a good amount of like ground feel without hurting the bottom of my feet. And I also do very much appreciate that bungee cord lace system where they have and just slip on the shoe. They have that classic Tom Sachs donning uh, straps, which the creators of Advisory Board Crystals, they really, really wear their Tom Sachs Mars Yard, so definitely they got that inspiration from them, 100%. Uh, but I love the opal detailing. I believe they have two other pairs coming out, and they're both going to be the, I think, Escape Mid, if I remember correctly, but their own version of it. Um, it's a very unique looking Escape Mid. Uh, I'll try and put some leaked images up here. Um, I'm not really feeling the black and white one, but I believe they have an Ecru or cream colored one coming out. That one looks interesting. I'll have to wait for more product photos to come out and the promotional material, but I am a big fan of, of this pair. And luckily the prices aren't too high. So if you guys want your own pair, go grab it. So if you guys have been with me for a while, um, you guys know that I originally had the Blends Style 36. Uh, this was quite a few years ago. I'm gonna say like probably four years ago. I had them, I did a review on them. Um, and guess who got them back? This is the Style 36 Blends Bones. And the story about this is that somebody actually hit me up and told me that they actually found um, a pair in my size for Crazy Steel and that steel was $100. I sold, I think I sold my pair for like 350 plus shipping, which I think is insane. If you guys are in the market for um, blends, vans, for some reason, all of them are going for almost nothing. Um, I can find an OG pair of the old schools for like 200, which is crazy. The one with like the zips on the side, that would be almost a unicorn a few years ago. Um, like even the skate highs, you'll be able to find them for uh, 300 even. And that's like super, super hard to find. Um, a lot of the more recently released, the unreleased pack, like the, the old school that I have here, they're going for even under retail, which I think is like crazy. So here are the old schools from the most recent unreleased pack. And this is the style 36s. 
although they're pretty much identical except for like toe shape and slight silhouette differences like that's kind of crazy right like you guys can get if you guys are looking for a way to differentiate your guys's like taste and your guys's um wardrobe or rotation this is an amazing time to adventure into like vans because like a lot of grail vans like defcon vans um all sorts of different types of vans you can you can get them for like uh, like super super cheap so keep an eye out but yeah style 36 vans super super happy to have this back in my rotation especially for a hundred dollars that's ridiculous thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments down below what was your guys's favorite pickup of this past season um, I'd love to get like a dialogue going. Um, I'm hoping to still record. I might be doing a, a vlog sort of thing while I'm at Korea. Like comment down below again if you guys would like to see that sort of content. Yeah, I'm going to be spending about two and a half weeks in Korea. Follow my Instagram at kevin.img. Um, and yeah, hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Talk to you guys later. Peace.